we were talking about the India opportunity and Dr. Rayan mentioned uh, India being on the cusp of the evolution of a new form of medicine, the new modern medicine which is an integration of the principles of modern medicine as we know it today with uh, the practices uh, you know, which take us back to our traditions and whether it's alternative um, uh, you know, medication and so on and so forth, yoga, spirituality, etc. What do you think needs to be done to ensure that this is a reality, as he pointed out, over the next no, five to seven years? No, I totally agree with uh, Dr. Trehan and what he's saying is the need of the hour today. World over, people are looking for something that could really bring a total solution, not uh, identifying any part of the you know, uh, problem and solving just a part only. Here, I want to bring to your notice in our Charak Samhita, the mm. Ayurvedic treatise, this is the only materia medica of the world which is written in poetic form. It's all in poems. That says, the first one says, Vastavrit, that is your daily routine. Mm. Dinacharya, Rutacharya, what you have to eat, what you should not eat, and how you should breathe, what... You know, all this has been there. But unfortunately, even in India, even among the Ayurvedic physicians, this has not been practiced. Hmm. We are just taking only the curative part and ignoring the other aspects which Ayurveda has... Uh, you find in Ayurvedic scriptures. So is this something that you could perhaps... Are you looking at reviving... Definitely, Nurturing definitely. It? See, today yoga, naturopathy, and uh, of course pranayama, kriya, meditation have uh, proven beyond doubt that they have a definite impact on the health of the society, the health of the individual and the health of the society as well. And we come up with a fusion medicine that would definitely help billions on this planet. You know, one of the other things that perhaps we could look at exporting, courtesy uh, uh, the art of living, uh, is, is dispute resolution, conflict resolution. Uh, and that is something that you've been working on from Colombia to Syria to Jammu and Kashmir. As we look around the world today, and you know, you just have to open the newspapers in the morning, you have to look at your television screens, there is very little to feel hopeful about. There's very little to feel optimistic about. In a situation like this, where do you find hope? Where do you find reason to believe that tomorrow things will get better? What is the way forward? Are you asking the question to me or Dr. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I am no traction in that. <laughs> so I would suggest as Dr. Trahani, when he walks into the hospital, there are so many patients and that doesn't rattle him, right? He knows these many people have to be treated and more are coming every day. And he does, and when, when you need, you open more hospitals. Mm. In the same way, when your purpose is clear and when you're confident what you're doing or what you're offering is effective and it is showing results, and you just continue doing it. Mm. Yeah. And my passion is taking what are people think as impossible, dreaming about it and doing it. What is your dream today? What do you dream of? I, I dream of a world which is free from conflict, free from stress, where people live as one family. Given, and it's, it's wonderful and we, I, I hope that more people dream of a world free of conflict and world of, uh, uh, free of stress so that we can actually get towards achieving that. But how do we get to achieving that goal? Because as I said, you know, this seems like such a far away uh, reality. It seems like a dream that is unattainable at this point in time. If you look at any pocket of the world, there is strife, there is conflict. Uh, people do not see eye to eye. Uh, it's, it's a battle between the state and its own people, it's a battle between people and its people. See, see you dream about, uh, I mean, dream has sense only when you dream about something which appears to be impossible. If it's a possibility, then it's not called a dream, you are just having a goal. Hmm. So I feel that we should all dream. What would you suggest? At 20, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or 40 years ago, nobody imagine that everyone will walk around with cell phone. Hmm. I think cell phone is my competitor. I have not reached as many 
individuals as a self of <laughs> so we need to reach out to people and tell them hey look how can you manage your mind how you can clear the positive make a positive energy around you clear those negative uh, strides that are uh, bothering you mm. or you are carrying around with you mm. this basic education peace education you may call it or education in spirituality you may call it education about yourself you may call it is needed in the world today it's like dental hygiene you mm. know unless and until uh, your parents have asked you to brush your teeth you didn't come up with a toothbrush when you were born from in the womb of the mother you were introduced to toothbrush to keep the dental hygiene similarly you need to be introduced to keep mental hygiene and mental hygiene today is the most important thing which can which can keep the families united which can keep people sane in their mind and societies more harmonious since you're talking about keeping societies more harmonious uh, you know and i ask you this in a practical sense whenever there is conflict whenever there is dispute the natural reaction is cease all talks there should be no communication between the two governments still there is some sort of uh, you know definitive action that's taken forward uh, it's not just india it's the world over is greater deeper engagement the more preferred route as opposed to saying look we're not going to engage with each other till you put something on the table or till i put something on the table what is the way forward i strongly believe in dialogue i strongly believe in communication but when it fails then um, they have to find other alternative methods to make the person listen to you what are the alternative methods that i will leave it to politicians i am not going to we shouldn't leave anything to politicians sir, by the way i i mean i firmly believe that we should leave very little to the politicians you you truly you you trust politicians i cannot put all politicians in a category of untrustworthy no it's not correct to do that and hmm. i never have any prejudice or bias about any person any community and i feel it is not a, a healthy intellect which holds prejudice against any profession whether it's spirituality or politics or business no we have to see it as a fact i only meant to say it's not my job to say what politicians should do or what actions they should take when the communication breaks down my job is to say how we can improve communication and i limit to that in a world uh, what do you say <laughs> whatever whatever you are doing you are doing it right look at the smiles and and the, and the applause and the, the applause google no the google i everybody is like i i i, I don't i don't think i could produce that in a thousand years what he has done fantastic that yeah, that you're absolutely right doctor but uh, you know they say uh, shri shri that uh, a teacher is one who makes himself progressively unnecessary in a room uh, full of these people here today <laughs> we're all smiling we're all applauding uh, on practically every word uh, that you're saying do you find that your role as a teacher is being rendered unnecessary every day or do you believe that uh, that you know the world still needs uh, you know what what you have to what you have to say what you have to communicate now i don't think anything about myself at all <laughs> <laughs> and i give total freedom for people to do whatever they want to do there are no do's and don'ts are uh, there are no i who am i to give them do's and don'ts hmm it they i only give them freedom everybody i tell them wake up you are a free bird and experience the inner freedom because and if you find your inner freedom you don't need to be tutored what you should do what you should not do common sense will prevail because that is the but when the common sense is lacking that's it and you are encaged in stress and narrow mindedness that is exactly when you need some guidance and i tell you everyone is a teacher no one should shy away from being a teacher hmm. i cannot deny by default everybody is a teacher 
because you learn from everybody either what one should do or one should not do <laughs> either way you have no escape from being a teacher well that is right but you know i want to ask you uh, since we're talking about the opportunity and we're talking about how perhaps we can change the way that we uh, enjoy our freedom uh, in schools for instance we're taught a certain way we're taught not to be inquisitive we're taught not to be curious we're taught to follow a certain way of of achieving a certain result it's all result oriented as opposed to being more knowledge oriented how do we change that the spirit of inquiry is basic and basic to the eastern philosophy if you say take the eastern philosophy it has never ever denied or denigrated science we have always said tatva gyan that is understand the five elements earth water fire air ether and then go to mind intellect memory ego and the self so we in the east we never said i am telling you something so you believe even if you take gita after saying all that shri krishna says in the end of the gita you think in your head you if it appeals to your intellect then you accept what i have said so we have always encouraged spirit of inquiry mm. so self inquiry who am i what is this mm. this is basic and if someone says don't ask questions don't inquire they are doing great injustice not just to philosophy but to humanity mm.